We are about to create our very own browser, a legendary PPP. And no, it's not named after that cryptocurrency that has been giving me trust issues lately. But more on that later. First things first, let's set up our virtual environment and install two modules, PyQt5 and PyQt Web Engine. PyQt5 is a set of Python bindings for the Qt libraries, perfect for creating graphical user interfaces. PyQt Web Engine allows us to embed web content and it's based on the Chrome browser. We we'll start by importing necessary modules, especially PyQt5. Qt is awesome because it's cross-platform, meaning our browser can run on Windows, MacOS, and Linux. Now let's create our main class, simple browser. We'll set the window title to Pepe Web. We'll set the window geometry and make sure that it opens to google.com by default. Our browser needs a toolbar with navigation buttons, back, forward, reload, and home. Most browsers don't have a home button, but I thought it will be nice because sometimes you just need to go home, right? But anyway, we're gonna add a URL bar for users to type web addresses. When you press enter, it will call the navigate to URL method. This method handles navigation and adds HTTP if no scheme is specified. We also need update URL method to update the URL bar when the page changes. Once all the methods are done, we can run our basic but functional web browser. Okay, looks like we missed an equal sign. Let's fix that. Now it says object has no attribute. I think it's typo. Let's fix those two. Let's search for my website, Bytegate Academy. Let's check the buttons. The buttons work. What happens if we search in the bar? First, it doesn't highlight the link as in Chrome or in other browsers. We need to fix that and let's search something. When I press enter, it just redirects to HTTP and search text, which is not correct, of course. I'm gonna create a new file for the URL bar functionality, import necessary libraries, and create a new class. This class will handle URL navigation and search queries. The constructor initializes the URL bar. It connects the return key press to the navigate to URL method, which we have defined in the main file, sets the focus policy to click focus, meaning it gains focus when clicked. Overrides the default mouse press event with highlight URL bar method, which I will create shortly. But first I want to move navigate to URL method from the main file to here, and I will rewrite the method so that it handles URL navigation and search queries. If the input contains spaces or doesn't have any dot, it's treated as a search query. For search queries, it creates a Google search URL and emits it. For URLs, it adds HTTP, if no protocol is specified, then emits or adds the URL. Now we can create highlight URL bar method. This method is called when the URL bar is clicked. It selects all the text in the URL bar and then calls the default mouse press event. I will also move update URL method from the main file to URL bar class. And of course the main file needs some adjustment. We don't need Q line edit anymore because it's important in the URL bar file. That's why we're just gonna say import URL bar class from URL bar. I should create an instance of the custom URL bar and then connects the URL change signal from URL bar to the browser set URL method. Also connect the browser's URL change signal to the URL bar's update URL method. Okay, I think I have said a lot of URLs. But anyway, I believe that's it and let's run the main file. So we got some error line to the main so yes, we need to remove URL bar. Let's run it one more time. The first, let's check the highlighting feature. Okay, it seems this doesn't work. Let me type something, I'll press enter. So at least this feature works. But let me type instagram.com because it should add HTTPS in the beginning of it and open the web address. Okay, great, it works. Now we need to find why highlighting doesn't work. I found out that PyQt5 has a class called QMassEvent, which can handle highlighting feature. I'm gonna import that class and let's remove this custom mouse press event assignment. I will rename this method to mouse press event. It will call the parent class's mouse press event method first, ensuring default behavior is maintained, then calls self.selectAll to select all the text in the URL bar. I think that's it, let's run the code. Okay, it successfully highlights the URL bar when it's clicked. I will quickly explain why I named it PepeWeb. 
So I bought some Pepe coins, hoping they will double, but they just fell. Meme coins, am I right? Nowadays, all I think is about Pepe coin, eagerly waiting for it to be doubled. So I decided to name my browser Pepe Web to release some stress. But anyway, let's add tabs. We create a new file, tabs.py, and define tab browser class. I'm not gonna explain everything in this code, but the general explanation is like we create QTab widget to manage multiple tabs, sets up the tab properties like closable document mode. To manage tabs, I have defined several methods. Add tab method, it creates a new tab with Q Web Engine View and URL bar. Close tab removes the tab, ensuring at least one tab remains open. Update tab title, it updates the tab title based on the web page title, which is easy. Then we have current tab change, it just handles switching between tabs. Then we have also two helper methods, current browser and current URL bar. Return the active browser and the URL bar. And of course, we added some changes in the main.py file to properly use tab browser class. Let's run the code. Now we have a new tab button. When clicked, it opens a new tab, which is great. Closing tabs works too. But closing the last tab should exit the browser, not to create a new tab. So I will fix that later. Finally, let's add favicons for tabs. I'm gonna do changes on tabs.py file, import to item class, and creating a new method named update tab item, which sets the icon for the specific tab. Then we'll do some changes in add tab method. This line connects the icon change signal of the QWeb engine view to the update tab item method. When a web page favicon changes, this signal is emitted and the tab's icon is updated accordingly. I'm gonna run the file, and okay, we see Google's icon, that's great, let's check GitHub. Yep, it changed to a GitHub's icon. Let me type my own website address. Okay, it looks like I don't have any favicon, so as it is just a simple HTML page. But maybe let's check LinkedIn. Okay, nice, it changed the icon, so everything works. I think that's it for this video. In the next one, I might add bookmarks or history. But let me know what features you want to see first. Bye and see you in the next video.